uh, from the crane. Yes, I have. Tell, okay, tell me that story. They moved the crane. They moved the crane before all the officers who got there. They moved the crane because I saw it. A piece of that crane, they were tightening the cables, and a piece of that equipment that was hung on that crane fell on the far right side of the bridge. Why, you see the far left side tilted up. They couldn't hold that what fell on the right side, so it collapsed. That's what caused that collapse. The tightening of those cables during rush hour and that piece of the equipment falling from the crane down onto the bridge. That's what caused that collapse. Mm. You walked up to I the bridge, to right? Yes. D describe yes. that process and what you saw, if you would, one more time. It was chaotic. I, everyone was running. I, well, how I could best explain it, I was not present during 9-11. But all the running in the midst of all that and everyone running, knowing, not knowing what's going on, but they want to get away, you know, and all that, that's exactly what I was experiencing. The only difference was I wanted to get to the core of the issue, and I just did not realize how much of a disaster it was until I saw all that with my eyes. Jose, we're going to put some of your pictures uh, from your feed up so that our viewers can see what it is that you saw. And this is when you were coming up. We see towering over this now. The, the first rescue yeah. workers are there. We see the red car in the near ground and the crane in the background. Yes, that's, that's, there's a crane there that they moved. There's a crane the there. The big you green can see crane. On the top of the crane. Uh, no, there's another one there. The one in the there's foreground, so the there. darker color one. Maybe yes. it's black. Yes. Okay. Yes, and that one was holding something. If you look, there's a hook, and the hook's halfway. Snap. That, that, that something was holding, that hook was holding that. That uh, blue equipment, which was tightening the cable. And that equipment fell on the bridge. And that's what caused, caused the collapse. And I, I don't know if, if our viewers, if you look very closely beneath this bridge, you'll see the front end of a Chevy and then another car next to it and another car next to it. And then this red vehicle. It's just it's just a red horrifying. The thought guy in it. it was a young guy. I thought I could help him. His hand was out and half his body was under the bridge. I couldn't I, I couldn't do anything. It was horrible. Oh, I want to show another. This is another of your photographs that, that we've just taken, frankly, from your Twitter feed, and we thank you for that. This is the, the picture where it appears to have snapped. The green crane is up above yes. at the time. You, you remember that one? Mm -hmm. Yes, and you see there's a clip. I'm not looking at the photo, but there's like a hook. There's a hook. There's the line from the crane, and at the end of that that's line, the previous, there's like a That's the previous photo. Okay, well, that Go back to the previous there, photo, if you would, in the booth, because I want I, I think many of our viewers may have noticed it. We can see this this line just slightly right of center, right above the green crane, is this what appears to be a cable of some sort hanging. Thank you, and that was holding that blue uh, blue equipment that you see on top of the right side of the bridge, which caused the collapse. The whole left side of the bridge couldn't hold that much pressure, and so it collapsed. Jose, it must have just been an. an and an otherworldly thing to be around at the time. I couldn't. I, I, I'm still shocked. I'm still shocked. I really am. I really am. Jose Mejia, who is who is on scene, or was at least in the very beginning. Uh, there's the. That's the. This is the green crane. This is not the one to which he's referring. The top of your spotlight. You can see. You can see that that cable dangling there from the black crane that's to the left. That's the one that Jose's been talking about. We we cannot know exactly what happened here. As you know, with any with any breaking news situation, the first reports are sometimes completely inaccurate. And sometimes they're right on point. But the thing that is certainly most disturbing is the thought of this bridge being 40 feet wide. Uh, you see the traffic light in the foreground there. I guess maybe it's just under the banner. But if we're looking at the WSVN picture, go to the WSVN picture. The live aerials from their air. Not this one, that one. Uh, in the near ground there, you see the traffic light. Now, it's Jose who tells us that, that, that the traffic light was red, that the cars were stopped underneath. This thing is 40 feet wide, and that there is many, somewhere around 18 cars uh, that are pancaked underneath that bridge. And that could mean uh, just, just perish the thought and, uh, and, and prayers for those who are there and condolences for their family members. It's a, a frightening thing to see. Again, from uh, Mo uh, Monique Madden, who's been reporting a verified account there and a reporter for the Miami Herald, I believe, uh, reporting that uh, Katrina Colazzo was at this red light 
when she said she felt something like small rocks falling on her car and as she turned around the whole back seat was smashed and the car next to her was buried so we don't know which of those which of those cars that she's talking about but she was in one of those uh, that is crashed, that is uh, smushed right there beneath that bridge. Hard to imagine. We, we have a, a fantastic local news station there as well as a, a bureau for the Fox News Channel. Phil Keating is one of the correspondents in that, in that bureau, and he's live on scene. Uh, Phil, it, it, as horrible as this is already, the thought of, of what's happening under that bridge is, 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 really, uh, is really debilitating. Yeah, it's heartbreaking. It's two hours since this bridge collapsed, or at least most of the bridge on the north side of Cayocho, which is southwest 8th Street here in the western part of the metropolitan area. This is a massively busy street, and the bridge that was constructed elsewhere was assembled and put up into place on Saturday, as we've mentioned. And ever since then, traffic has been flowing eastbound and westbound here on southwest 8th Street, the Tamiami Trail, ever since. And the bridge was supposed Supposed to open officially for pedestrian traffic uh, this upcoming week. Now you can see the piece of the bridge that's not pancaked, not flattened down on the street. It's angled up at about a 40 degree angle to the left of that on the screen. That's looking south. This is the edge of the FIU campus, Florida International University. And this pedestrian bridge was to span the eight lanes of very busy traffic, Southwest 8th Street, and then over to the north side, which is now the town of Sweetwater. And you can see that new dorm, that, that very tall 12 or 15 story dorm there. Uh, that's part of the reason. There are thousands of students that attend FIU who are now living on the north side of this major boulevard, major thoroughfare here in Southwest Dade County. And that was why everybody was so excited about this pedestrian bridge, said to be state of the art, brand new design. But uh, whatever the cause happened right now, it's obviously a catastrophic event with some serious integrity issues to explain. Shep. It's 4 o'clock on the East Coast, 1 p.m. on the West Coast. I'm Shepard Smith in New York, and this is Fox News Channel's continuing coverage of a bridge collapse in South Florida. It happened just about two hours ago, and Ross Lowe is interviewing one who was on scene at the time, getting a first-hand account of what, of what happened. Let's listen. A 950-ton section of a pedestrian bridge coming down. Sally? Oh, you were in a salon? Uh, in a salon class. Oh. Class. Um, cuando salí, vi todo. Rosh's Spanish is fluent and he may translate live for us. Let's listen. Okay, uh, Rosh is waiting for a live for a live shot to begin with WSVN 7. We're getting uh, pictures from WSVN now, multiple injuries on scene from the people who they were able to take away. The question now is that they bring in heavy movers uh, and big equipment to try to remove the concrete and the bridge itself from the cars beneath, waiting to find out what has happened. Craig Stevens and Belkis DeRay on the news desk in South Florida. Let's listen. The scene, we have a network of seven news reporters covering people? this and we're going to get started with seven's rosh low who looks like he may be having an interview ready for us rosh i'm, I'm right i'm right here we were just speaking to people who are who are coming out of the uh, campus just just talking to us about their shock they're sitting in class and all of a sudden they hear this bridge collapse we'll get to that in in a moment here but first let me get to this let me get to this statement from fiu florida international university let's go right to that statement right now uh, uh, dear members of the university community, we are shocked and saddened about the tragic events unfolding at the FIU Sweetwater Pedestrian Bridge. At this time, we are still involved in rescue efforts and gathering information. We are working closely with authorities and first responders on the scene. We will share updates as we have them. Now, somebody just sent me a photo. I, I want to make sure that we have this photo. Uh, this was a witness who was driving along Southwest 8th Street right when this happened. And you can see how traffic, are we seeing that picture right now? We can see how, how traffic just stopped there, stopped at the bridge. And uh, obviously, uh, we do believe 
believe that there were some cars that were underneath that bridge. Now, we were just speaking to Andrea. Uh, I'm going to help translate uh, Andrea for a moment or try my best. We all actually have Belkis back there who can help me as well. But you were in class and you saw all, all of this. Tell me about that. Eh, bueno, este, mi director me dijo que nada, se cayó el... She's saying that her uh, director told her the bridge had gone down, and when she came out, she saw that the bridge had already collapsed, and she saw the cars that were already crushed, and they told her that several people had already died. What was that like? I want to interrupt for just a moment because we've just gotten some new information from our network news service affiliate, WPLG, uh, ABC for South Florida, which is reporting much of what we heard just a moment ago from that witness. Remember, the witness said they were tightening a cable and then something snapped. Well, here's what we can confirm now through the reporting of WPLG, and that is that there was a stress test underway for that bridge. Think of it this way. They, have, they, they This noise is unbearable. They, they, they constructed the bridge in another place. They put the bridge into place or finished that process on Saturday. And since then, they've been conducting stress tests on the bridge. There was one underway when the bridge collapsed this afternoon. Uh, Phil Keating is on scene uh, for us as he has been uh, for the, the last better part of a half hour at least. And uh, Phil, there, there, there will be reporting in the hours and days and weeks ahead on what caused this, who, if anyone, might have been responsible, whether this, whatever all of that is. Our, our greatest interest now is how are they going to get underneath that bridge to find out if anyone is, is alive in what may be as many as 18 cars under there. Yeah, absolutely. As you mentioned earlier, the mayor of the county, uh, Carlos Jimenez, said it was uh, eight cars that he he would knew about talking to law enforcement sources. But we're now beyond two hours since this happened. And so the most critical thing here is if, in fact, there are any people either trapped in their vehicles or perhaps between the now pancaked pedestrian bridge and Southwest 